everyone and welcome. Let me know you can hear me. I'm Melissa Armo and I'm here to talk to you today about my favorite topic. It's gaps. Gaps in the market. Can everybody hear me? If you have questions, <coughs> excuse me, just write them in the room and I'll answer them as we go along tonight. So let's get right into it today. I'm going to talk about advanced technical analysis. That's how I, I determine each day what gap I'm trading. And I know we're going to talk here a little bit and I'll go back and forth maybe with charts as well to show you what a gap is. But I, it's technical analysis that I'm using, okay, to look at the gap and then determine if the gap is a long or a short, okay? If you have questions as we go along here, feel free to email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, or Skype, okay? So, and again, and again, feel free to call me if you have any questions as well. I get this question a lot. Can you make money in the market using just advanced technical analysis skills? And the answer is yes, you can. You don't have to follow fundamentals or read reports of stocks, uh, earnings reports, to determine whether or not something is a good long or a good buy. In fact, there would be no time to do that. It's just not physically possible from the time you get up each morning to determine if you're going to really do this as an active trader, which is what I do. So I'm very active. You couldn't possibly look at every report of every stock that's out there and analyze it, at least not if you wanted to be active, okay? So trading is not investing. It's pulling money in and out of the market consistently, day after day after day. I call it chunking it out, but that's really the way that I'm looking at it. And I see some people signing here late. Again, if you have any questions, you can just write them in the room. Um, feel free. Anyways, understanding how to read price in the correct direction is a key ingredient in profiting in the market. Set yourself apart from the world of novice traders and investors by becoming an expert in technical analysis. Really what I do is very simple, quite frankly. Um, it's not that tricky. It's just that many people don't understand what I do because they don't know the things that I'm looking at. But once you learn it, it's really not that tricky. Experts have knowledge, do their homework, and read information in real time in the form of price patterns in charts. Becoming an expert in technical analysis is a vital ingredient to becoming successful as a professional trader or investor. What a current company's value or worth is always reflected in the price right now. Okay, we're not worried about later, we're worried about right now, today, or at least within, if we're doing an option, 24, 48 hours, or the time of the option, and in day trade, we're interested in what's happening right now in seconds or minutes. You know, day trades, you have to be out by four o'clock, okay? So price patterns and charts hold the key to making decisions ahead of time and in the moment to profit and profit substantially. Making money in the market involves making timely decisions based on price. Price supersedes everything else, even fundamentals, as I was just discussing, okay? Again, because the idea of price is immediate, right now, this second. And we all, if you have a live platform, can look up and see the price of anything in real time or as close to real time as we can get in today's electronic world. It's really important, really important, critical, okay? to make the time to trade on a higher level. This market was choppy for a period in May, then we went and we rallied, and now it's starting to get choppy again. You know, anytime you trade, you gotta know what you're doing. I don't care if it's COVID-19, 2020, it, it doesn't matter. An election year, you have to know what you're doing in all times, in all instances when you're risking your money in the market, okay? And again, if anyone has any questions, just write it in the room as we go along here. But people go to school, okay, to learn what to do. That's how people become doctors and nurses and attorneys and accountants. I, it, it amazes me that people trade the market, train the market, and actually risk their money without ever having taken a class at all. That shocks me. And then they wonder why they're losing. Well, no wonder they're losing, okay? It's, it's something that you have to take seriously to do it. And I get this question a lot, so I wanted to put this in the webinar tonight and address it. How am I different 
from other people out there and why learn from me? Um, I could talk about why I'm different from other people all night, but you know, there are many trading educational places out there. So specifically, specifically just addressing that, you know, why I think it would be different to learn from someone like me versus someone else that's teaching educational classes is I trade the market myself, okay, daily. I created the method I teach, which makes me extremely unique. No one else is doing it but me because I created it. And I created it myself for myself. I teach and trade this method and I don't teach or trade any other strategies or any other methods. A lot of educational companies are doing Forex, they're doing Bitcoin, they're doing futures. I'm just doing what I'm doing and nothing else. And the company doesn't teach anything else because I'm the teacher. I'm the only teacher. I am the stock swoosh. I also prefer one direction. Many of the trades, I'd say 90% of the trades that we're doing in the day trade room are shorts, okay? That's unusual too and unique. I also only tend to take one day trade or one ticker symbol a day, maybe two. Like I have one pick, that's how I run the room. I just think it's easier to focus on one simple. And I've accurately called the market and it says for, this is this says the last three years, this must be an old, old write up. I've been calling the market accurately for way more than three years, but I've on, been on television for three years discussing it, um, which is interesting. And, and if I have time, We'll pull up the market here today to go on more because the market did something very, very critical today. Um, and if we have time, I'll talk about it. Anyways, I'm also not trying to sell you on any other method or strategy but what I personally know and do and know works. I made the system for myself, which is a key ingredient, I think, in why it works so well. I didn't do it for the purpose to ever teach anyone at all. It ended up being something that morphed into me teaching people once I realized I had a voice, just like I have a voice on television. And it's actually something I enjoy doing. I also don't hold anything back at the class, I'm honest, which is also something unique in this industry. I'm making money and very proud of the calls that I've been making this year. And I also did it on my own and I persevered until I made it. So, you know, I, I was talking about this the other day in the trading room. I can't believe how many people quit. They attempt to trade and then they quit. So few people stick with it. And then they actually come back, but then they quit again quickly after that anyways. Like if you're really gonna do something, you throw yourself into it and you do it, okay? And I'm passionate about what I do in reference to trading in the market. I'm passionate about talking on TV. I'm passionate about anything that I decide that I wanna do. I know that's not everyone's personality, but quite frankly, if you wanna trade the market and risk your own money in it, you do have to have some kind of level of passion for doing it because you may have some challenges along the way. What even if you come and learn from me, what you're gonna learn from me is new. You may not understand it. You may have to ask me questions, okay? And so when you're passionate about something, it tends to lead towards a higher level of success. And again, that's one of the reasons why I, I ended up figuring all of this stuff out because I really, 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 really wanted to figure it out, okay? I wanted to be successful so badly in reference to trading. And so that's how I was able to accomplish it, okay? So let's get into the nitty gritty here of technical analysis. What is technical analysis? The method used to analyze securities and make investment decisions fall into two very broad categories, fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Fundamental analysis involves analyzing the characteristics of a company in order to estimate its value. Technical analysis takes a completely different approach. It doesn't care one bit about the value of a company or commodity. Technicians, sometimes called chartists, I would describe myself as a chartist, are only interested in the price movements in the market, okay? Nothing else, as I was saying earlier. I do not read research reports. I do not read uh, you know, anything about a company's earnings or PE ratio, none of that. I don't take any of that into account when I'm making decisions about trades, okay? And over the course of the last you know, 12 years, I've really trained my brain to read charts by looking at the gaps. And that's sometimes how I can call trades like in seconds in real life time in the trading room, okay? Because I can just see it like an imprint. And this again has served me well, but for many people, they never get to the point that they train their brain because they never stick on and stay with one strategy or system, a way of looking at things. They will look at far too many indicators, far too many different things, far too many different systems and be all over the place and very erratic. 
And so they never train their brain at one specific thing, whereas I have, okay? So think about it like this. Reading price is like learning a language. If you are, you know, doing that, what is it? The Rosetta Stone teaches different languages online. Whatever you're doing when you're starting something new, French, Spanish, German, whatever, if you're learning a new language, Italian, you're starting out like at the beginning and you train yourself not only to write it and read it, but to speak in a different language, the way things sound, okay, to get it right. And think of charts like that. So everybody has charts and I'm sure has looked at charts, but you don't read them the same as me, okay? So I devise this whole new method of how to accurately read directional bias using advanced technical analysis. And again, it's easy, it's in the gap. There's one underlying principle that exists in the world of the market and every chart in ETF is in existence. What is it? It is a pattern that exists in the stock market. Understanding to read price is so critical to create substantial gains in the market, which obviously was what everyone wants. You don't want to lose, you want to make money, okay? So what do you need to look for in a chart to know whether to take a trade? What is important and what not, is not important? What is important is price, okay? I cannot stress that enough. What else is important for something, for shorting, which I was been talking to you about the fact that I like to do, panic. This is very, very important. We saw that last week. Market fell hard on Thursday. Market fell Friday too, okay? So panic is important, like this guy here. What happens when people panic, they sell, okay? So that's good if you're looking to short. So selling, is from what? Panic, panic people in the wrong direction, okay? Now, how do you short? Well, you can do day trade shorts, which we do in the day trading room, or you can buy puts. This particular one was a put, so I called JPM puts, and this was, this was back in the middle of May. I called the 90 strikes, okay? And I'll pull up the chart to show you this in a minute. I called it on May 11th. And I called it to expire that same week. Very often I do it within one to two weeks for the option trades. This was a nice trade. Cost was $1.80, sold at $6.80. Really nice move. How did this set up? Now I'm gonna click this off here and just pull up the JPM chart. If you can just hang on here for me for a second. Can everybody see it? We're just gonna go back and forth here. So this was, May 11th was the day I called it here. Now, again, where did it go? Dropped, fell, the put strike was 90, fell, fell, fell. Look at the beautiful follow through. So you could have actually got out of the trade the first day here with profit. You could have held it the second day here, low was 86.90. You could have held it for the third day here low was 83.40. So that's a really nice trade, why? It fell hard through the strike. And in this, this, this is a bank, JPM, this one, if you trade this as options, you really need to get this through the strike. Um, it's just one of these ones, you really have to get them to move. So this was a very nice, and you, you may look at this and not think this is much of anything at all, but it was, you can see that there, okay? So this is selling, that's happening, stock price drops. I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint here. And that's how you could have made $20,000. That's just in one week on one stock. Now, this is an advanced risk of 7,200. What if you bought one contract, okay? Would have cost you only 180 bucks. You still could have made money, okay? It's the idea of how much you risk. Someone was asking me this the other day. It depends on how much cash you have. So the idea is to build your account up if you have a small account. This was another nice short, but it was a put. So when you're doing options, you buy puts, okay? This was the 119 puts. Cost was 210. Again, these are relatively reasonable price cost trades. Again, one contract would have been $210. Sold at four profit, 7,600. Really, really nice trade. I'm usually looking for 50% to 100% return on in investment. In this case here, this was almost 100%, but a beautiful move. Now let's look at the target chart. This was May 21st when I called it. I'm gonna pull it up again over here and show you. 
everybody see the chart again. We're going to pull up Target. May 21st here. Now this took a little bit of a time. It started falling here, but it really didn't get the traction till when? Boom. Here on the 26th. This is a nice fat bar. Okay. See the low is 114.81 and I've called the 119 strikes. See this momentum. Again, this is selling and panic from people that are what? That are long target, that are selling then. Sold since the day I called it. But this was the one here that just kaboomed, okay? And any questions, just write them in the room as we're going along. So here is an example of not an option, but a day trade. Here, I have this chart in here. This is HPQ. This was selling too but a different way to take the trade. This is a day trade where you're in and out quickly on the day. All of this is using my system, using technical analysis. Technical analysis and what in the gap? This day, the stock gap, this is HPQ. Now, what is a gap? The stock closed at one price one day and opened at a different price the next day. Boom. And then I get up in the morning and I determine, if I'm looking at HPQ like I was this morning, if this is a long or short. Okay, now HPQ was a nice short. Entry was 15.52. I use stops, hard stops when I do day trades. Share quantity 5,000. Risk was 2,900. We added on this because it, we added into the momentum. It continued, doubled up on the sizing. And really what looks like a very small bar was actually a very profitable day. So 50 cents thereabouts, but you still could have made 3,700 bucks but it was a very accurate trade. Accuracy counts when you're trading. It counts all the time, but particularly when you're trading on a one minute chart or any time intraday between 9.30 and four, okay? In reference to the options, if you get filled in an option trade and get filled 20 cents more or 20 cents less, that's not that big of a deal if it moves with momentum and you're getting it and you're holding it for a couple of days. But for something like day trades, you really have to have the sizing right and you have to have the stop right too. Okay, again, you see how everything is based on numbers, 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 numbers. And again, if we have time at the end, I will talk about the market because numbers are important. That's what technical analysis is. I'm looking at the numbers in the chart. Okay, so my method that I designed is the Golden Gap 26 point rating system. It's, it was a completely new method that I created. It's, I mean, it's 12 years now I've been doing it. But I go through the point system, I go through the checklist every morning to determine what we're gonna do. And again, whether we'll go long or short, but as I'm telling you, I prefer to short. Now we're gonna talk about a little bit here, what is a gap? I was kind of talking about it with the HPQ. But a stock gap, so the opening price today is different from the closing price of the previous day's trading. A gap is a break in the price action from one day to the next. Simple, okay? That's simple. Well, then you say, well, how do I know what to do with them? Well. I rate them to determine it. That's what you come and learn from me. So I called my system a golden gap because a golden gap is a gap that has high odds, high odds of working on the day. Everything is about odds. Nothing is 100% in the market. You have to say, well, the odds are in my favor. This is going to work. And when you see that and it rates a certain number, then you do it. If the odds aren't in your favor, you don't take the trade. There are some days that we don't trade. Friday, we didn't do anything. The odds weren't in our favor. It was going to be a sloppy market Friday, and I knew that after Thursday. Finding gaps that rate according to the 26-point Golden Gap rating system is like finding gold in the market. Golden Gap spot institutional money. And institutional money is what moves the market. It moves it higher and it moves it lower, okay? Golden Gaps are made by professionals. There are gaps that have a high odds of working in the day in the correct direction of the gap with a large momentum move. You make money as a trader when you're playing momentum. You gotta have it. You're not gonna make any real money if you're getting five, 10 cent, 20 cent moves. I know people wanna trade low float stocks and trade hundreds of thousands of shares and get 20 cents out of them. That is too aggressive, too risky, and quite frankly, doesn't make any sense, okay? Institutions are not trading low float stocks. 
and you'll lose far more than you'll ever win by taking size positions like that to even make a couple thousand dollars. It's much, much better to trade stocks that move a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars or more and take a couple hundred shares or a couple thousand shares, okay? And this is for anybody with any size account, quite frankly. So why do Golden Gaps work to read price? Gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. The gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then to confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction. The large institutional money is on your side and then you play it. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. Thus, an action is being forced. Like we're talking about with the panic but participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful, and it definitely, definitely is. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money. And that's how you as one individual can make a lot of money in the market, even with a small account. Because even if you have a larger cap as one individual, you aren't gonna move a stock, okay? You personally can't move any stock. You've gotta be with the big money, all right? So it's about power money. Power money is hedge funds, it's big banks. That's what, that's what institutional money is. And they move stocks. They create actually the gaps that I'm playing. Now, does that mean that every stock that gaps down is a short or every stock that gaps up is a long? No, no, it's not that easy. If it was, guess what? Everybody would make money in the market and that's not the case. It's very, very specific. Some gaps we don't do. Some gaps are good shorts. Some gaps are good longs, okay? That's the purpose of getting up in the morning and looking at the pre-market data, seeing the gap, and then rating it, okay? And again, this is all that I teach in detail in the class, but I'm just trying to give you an eye-opener here. Now, we did Apple. This was a call. So again, you can go long gaps too. Apple was a call. We did the 320s. This was back at the end of May. The cost of this contract for the 320s, I called on May 27th. It expired 6.5, was 3.90, okay? And you could have sold it for seven. That's a nice profit. Again, not quite 100%, but close. So we'll look at Apple. May 27th, gosh, May, May seems a while ago now, doesn't it? <coughs> Especially since when it's almost July. May 27th here, and I called the 320s, and actually, you could have taken profits right in here, snug as a bug. Now, if you held this one, it continued, okay? But you could have gotten out of this here. It actually ran up here on 6.3 to 3.26.20, and I'm gonna point this out, every once in a blue moon, something will have a big run up the last day. In this case here, it, was, it did. Now, this isn't what I thought would have been a good exit on this, but if you actually held this, this went $11, almost 12 through the strike. Look at that. Again, risky to hold it the last day, but I'm just pointing that out here for this. But it actually did move the second day, okay? So again, this was a long, Then we did along in the diamonds. This was that same week, last week of May. Cost was 430, sold at 920, 20 contracts. Would have been an $8,600 risk, profit 9,800. Nice move. Um, and I'm gonna show you this in a minute too. This was the diamonds, this is the Dow ETF. Here, see it? Snug as a bug. This is a gap up. Closed here, gapped up. Took a second day to move, boom, there's the punch. Ran up, high this day when it gapped up was 255.79. Gapped up the next day even more, 257.94. That's really nice, $8 through the strike. Again, you bought it here, you could have sold it here, you could have sold it here. Typically I'm looking for 24 to 48 hours, okay? And since I have this out, we may as well talk about this. This was a gap down here that happened last week where the market sold off. We were talking about panic selling. So the market closed here Wednesday, 270.46, boom. See where it opened? 262.14. 
sold off. Okay. Any questions as we're going along here? So I just put in here two weeks. Two weeks, this was the last week of May and the first week of June. And I, and I, I wanna show the results that you could have had with a $2,500 risk in the day trades with my trade calls in the room. And this was not doing trades four days. We didn't do any trades. So we didn't do any trades four days in two weeks and you still could have made over $15,000. Now, how is that possible? Because we got the right things. It's the same thing as anything, okay? And there were no what I would call massively huge days in here. These are just normal, normal days where you're looking for one turnaround, for one and a half turnaround. Eric, I know you gotta get back to the room. You've just really, really been on point in the last month. So it's one of these things where this is from a student, Jackie. Uh, I, I've just been, I've been on a roll. I think I think I, as a, doing this for this long now, like I said, twelve years. Sometimes I do get in a hot string, but and I'm in that right now with everything, options and day trades. But in general, it just in normal times with me, you're looking for an eighty percent win ratio. So you figure out that of every ten trades, two are going to lose and eight are going to be positive. Right now, I'm in a hot streak where everything is working. Now again. That's not all the time, but that's just where I'm at right now. One of the reasons is I'm extremely, extremely focused because of the market right now, like I said, has been slightly choppy. And again, if I have time, we'll talk about that tonight. But any questions so far? So when people say they can't, though, I'm gonna go back to this. People say, oh, I can't, I can't make money trading. That's baloney schmoney. Yes, you can. And you don't even need to trade every day. And you don't need to trade all day long. And you don't need to do 50, 60, 70, 500 trades a week. You don't, okay? It is quality, 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 quality. And that is the whole point. And I realized that very early on in my career, before I even figured any of this out. I realized that, and that's why I set out to try to find the best thing every day. And that's why it took me three years to do it, because I was very determined in how to do that. Uh, Che, we'll, we'll go over that, because you're asking of a specific question let me, let me, I'll answer that at the end, okay? Since you're asking a specific market question. But I won't forget it. So anyways, using a system and a checklist is a very, very professional way to trade, okay? It, 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 it's, it's not like throwing darts at a board. And unfortunately, many traders, that's what they do. There's a 50-50 chance of working, that's how they think. I don't think like that. I always take a trade and feel like I have 100% conviction it's gonna work. I never take a trade I don't think is going to work, okay? So the purpose of the checklist, though, is to find stocks to trade that have what? A high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Big move from the day, typically like last Thursday with the market sell-off. Early confirmation of the bias and the move between 9.30 and 10. So if you want to trade with me, you'd have to be available during that morning period and precise entries with follow-through and a good risk to reward. Again, I'm looking for a one-over. So if you came and wanted to do my class, you would learn my system. It is a 26 point rating system, okay? That's what's in the class. You use it to rate stocks to play intraday or you can do them as options. However, the 26 point rating system can be used to choose a stock to take as a swing trade or core trade too, if you really wanna do that. One of the reasons why the Golden Gap course is so unique is because the system can be used in multiple ways to trade one stock symbol. Like you could do a, a day trade in the diamonds and say a put, like you could have done both of those last Thursday, okay? It can be used to trade in multiple time frames depending on your financial goals. Do you have the time to day trade or just do the overnights and the options? That's really up to you. And it's up to you whether it's short or long term. So it, how is it possible to use one system for many, many time frames? Because a system follows the large institutional money. This is why the information taught in the Golden Gap course is so valuable. And how many systems, when you think about it, can you trade in multi-purpose ways and time frames with conviction? Very few. It, I didn't even design my system for that purpose, but I realized it after I was doing it for several years. I didn't start doing options at the beginning of my career. I was day trading for many years before I started doing options and I realized the follow through and how I could be doing them overnight. 
The Golden Gap rating system uses advanced technical analysis and is ascertaining the direction it's set up, and therefore it can be used in multiple time frames. All right, so that's a plus. So you can use it for swing trades options, even, even if you don't have time one day to do a day trade. And if you use advanced technical analysis skills, you can trade more accurately, and that will allow you to make more money. If you're going to put $7,000 on the line, or you're gonna put $8,000 on the line, or you're gonna put $2,000 on the line, whatever, of your hard-earned money, you wanna have a high level of accuracy. You want to know that it is going to work as close as you can get to 100% knowing that some trades will lose, but knowing that far more will win. And that's what allows you to handle emotionally and financially the losers. Say I take a trade and it loses. I know the next trade is probably gonna work, so it doesn't bother me, okay? Whereas many people, when they lose in the market, they get so frustrated and upset because they don't know if the next trade is gonna be a loser or a winner. I have a high level of confidence because I'm so familiar with my system and I've been doing it for so long. So, and, and my ability to read charts gives me the conviction to take the risk and do it. And also shorting, like I said, is just something that I love to do. And even though it's summer, it's pl there's plenty of stuff to do, plenty of gaps, and plenty of things to short, okay? Any questions here? Now this, however, was a long, we went long the SPY, entry was 310.50, Every once in a while, we will go long in the day trading room, so I'm showing you some longs. 309.20 was the stop. 2,500 shares, risk was 32.50, exit was 3.12. The market did act very bullishly into this period here. This is the swing up here at the end of May into the beginning of June. So this was a nice day trade. Now, again, if you don't have the equity to do a day trade with the SPY, you could have bought calls. You could have bought the 310 calls. You could have bought the 311 calls. You could have bought the 312 calls and still gotten, boom, the push and the run up, okay? So again, it's just another way of doing it to profit. Here was another long. We did the diamonds, entry 260.52, stop was 259.50, 2,500 shares was a risk of 25.50, exit was 262.25, again, we're looking for a dollar, two dollar move with the day trades, you can see here. And the size helps. We could have made 43.25, this was a really nice day. So again, if you can't afford to buy this, take 2,500 shares of the diamonds at this price point, with buying power margin, you can buy the call, okay? Any questions here so far? So I've kind of been talking about this, I personally think that shorting has given me an edge all across the board with my trading because I can really see when somebody's a good long because I'm such an expert in shorting. I prefer to short, but I also go long, but we only go longs to really good longs because I have an edge in, because I know how to short so well that I know what a good long is. And you know, for whatever reason, many traders prefer to go long. They're not good at shorting and they can't tell a good long, good long from a bad long, okay? So shorting has given me an edge and that's just something that I didn't know at the beginning either, but I've realized over time. So as far as percentage of returns, you know, it, it can be huge in day trades. If you look at percentages, I look at risk to reward. You're risking 100, you're looking to make 100. You're risking 1,000, you're looking to make 1,000. When you're doing options, you can look at it as a percentage. If you're risking 2,000, you're looking to make 2,000, 100% return on investment. So day trading is a little bit different than options as far as percentage of return. I say one, in, one, one around flip over, but with day trading, a percentage of return is really based on an R concept, a risk. You set your risk. It's set based on the cash size of your account and how much equity you have, okay? And we're talking about day trades or options, which either one. It should be the same for most of the trades you take, equal or close to equal. And when I do an ad, it's like I'm doing two trades in one. So what is an R? An R is one risk unit. The risk unit per trade should be equal or close to equal per trade. It doesn't matter if it's an option though or a day trade. It should be the same or close to it. You can't go all across the board. If I call a, a, a trade in Google that's an option and it costs $35 for one and you're not spending $3,500 for on your, on your positions, you can't do it then, okay? You can't be all over the place with this. <laughs> this has to be consistent or it will mess up your results. So the risk unit is the amount of money you're actually risking in the trade if you use a hard stop. 
If you do not use a hard stop, you have unlimited risk. That's why I use hard stops. So many people do not know where to put a stop. I teach this in the class, but it is important. Know that you have to have a kill point place. As far as options, the kill point in the stop is the, is the amount that you have risked. You can't lose any more than that. That's the nice thing about options. The amount of risk is the stop. And this is true for any beginner, intermediate, or advanced person, okay? But the bigger picture is something that, for me, I wanted to change careers. If you like what you're doing as a career, and you just want to make money on the side, that's perfectly fine. It still doesn't mean you have to say, oh, whatever. No, you have to take it seriously because you'll lose money for years doing it on the side. And what's the point of that? Pretty dumb, all right? If you want to do this seriously as a career, you have to take it seriously. If you want to do it on the side, you have to take it seriously. You have to take it seriously no matter what your reason for doing it. You should know the reason that you're doing it though. So you can set some goals for yourself 12 months out or six months out or whatever. One important key factor in becoming a successful trader is keeping in mind the bigger picture while living in the now. This is difficult for people to do, but it's very important. Everybody wants what they want today, yesterday. That's not realistic, okay? But you can get there in the future and in a reasonable amount of time with diligence and hard work and certainly following a good mentor like me and learning along the way. You can live in the now with your daily decisions, but keep the bigger picture in mind of where you want to go and who you want to become. And I think that's important. If you do not keep the bigger picture in mind, the regular everyday things in life will consume your daily thoughts and you will never reach the bigger picture goal. Trading is a career choice if you want to do it for a career and a lifestyle choice where you want to work only a certain amount of hours of day and you don't want to work weekends. And for me, that was very important besides working for myself. Many people struggle to remember the bigger picture goals and dreams during their day-to-day -day activities. Like, what do I mean? Getting out of control. You take one trade, it loses. And then you keep trading like a banshee, like it's the last day you're ever going to trade and you blow up your account. People do it all the time. That's really dumb. Think of the bigger picture. One loss in a day or two losses in a day isn't going to kill you and it's not going to kill your account. Blowing up your account will kill you. So take a step back. Everybody has a bad day once in a while. You have to always have the bigger picture in mind. For me, it was a culmination of many things. One, I wanted to change careers because I was doing mortgages and I hated it. And two, I also didn't want to work weekends anymore. Didn't want to work 12 hour days. Okay, you have a lot more time to yourself if you work from home and trade and it's convenient, particularly in this time right now with COVID-19. I know a lot of people are working from home, but their structure is different. My life hasn't changed. I can't go to the gym. I can't go out and see my friends. But as far as my work life, my professional life, it has not changed at all during COVID-19. And for that, I'm truly, truly blessed. But when you work for yourself, it is something that is a blessing, but you gotta get to that point, okay? You gotta get to that point. I think the bigger picture, if this is your real goal, or say you're retired and you wanna make extra money and work part-time, you have to think of the bigger picture. It is nice to be your own boss and work from home. And I think a lot of people realize that this year, again, with what everything's been happening with the vi virus. Jade, I will get to your question here when I'm done at the end, but anybody else have any other questions? So think about what I said tonight about your plan of action. If you're interested in learning my system, you can reach out to me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com, but it is important to know why you're doing this. Like I had a clear, clear focus that I wanted a new career and I was able to achieve it. It was hard work, it was diligence, it was perseverance, and it took me three years. But think about your own plan of action. Everyone has a different one. Um, you can teach yourself and lose as much money as you can, stay in until you figure it out or run out of money. This is what many people actually do. Two, you can learn from someone else at a cost, like the cost of my class. So, you know, there's two choices that you have if you wanna make it. You can do one or you can do two. Most people that I talk to do one. And then I find they come back around years later and end up then learning from me anyways. I talked to a guy last week. He, he didn't want to do my class. He thought $7,000 was too much money. So he paid $5,000 for a class somewhere else and lost $5,000 in a month trading. So he spent ten, dollars and then he ended up calling me up. And he, he still hasn't done the class. It's, you know, you're going to lose money from the market and you're going to lose money on cheaper classes. There's a reason that... My class is priced the way that it is. It's worth it. Same thing with my options newsletter. I haven't called one options trade 
in the last three weeks that's lost. Every single trade I've caught on that options letter has worked for the last three weeks. It might even be four now. I, I have to look and go back. I, I have had a 100% return, you know, uh, win ratio lately. But, you know, it's, it's funny because there was a week in May where the market was really difficult. And, and I was saying to myself, gosh, this market is so tight. And then I thought to my, and then I was talking to people, they said, oh, da, 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 da. And I said, you know, no, it's me. It's all me. Like I am perfect when I want to be, like I can be perfect. Like when I'm focused, I'm, I'm a hundred percent, but you know, obviously I'm doing many other things and many other factors in life going on when at a person, you know, when the person's world, you know, trading isn't the only thing in my life. But it's interesting because I know that I'm that good that I can even handle a difficult market, but it takes an extreme amount of focus sometimes. Market isn't like that 365 days a year, but sometimes it is. And we're kind of in that period. You know, you can call it because of COVID-19 or whatever, but we have been in that period this year. So you have to be focused too. You have to be focused if you come to me, you have to listen to what I'm saying, get the concepts, write them down, think about it process the charts. Anyways, you have, you have to decide for yourself. I'm here to tell you that two is easier and cheaper in the end, just like the example of the gentleman that I gave you. I'll probably be having the same conversation with him a month from now. But you know, you have to go through your own process. I try to guide people along the way and say, think about the things I'm saying. It makes sense. And a lot of it is common sense. So anyways, my class teaches one solid strategy. It teaches multiple entries in place. It teaches you how to trade the open, which is critical. It teaches you how to book money intraday in stocks. It teaches you advanced chart reading skills, and it teaches you how to get conviction in your own trading in the market as a source of wealth. And whether you wanna become wealthy or whether you just wanna replace your current job, it, both are available, okay? The market has billions and billions and trillions of dollars in it. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches a strategy on how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you what direction to trade the stock on the day. The course teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. So why take my class? One, to learn a strategy that you can use to make money in the US stock market. One of the best markets in the world. To learn a strategy that offers momentum moves in stocks each day. Very important. We don't trade crap. We trade stocks you know of, companies you've heard of, Apple, Google, Amazon. To learn how to trade gaps, okay, specifically. To learn how to read charts with advanced technical analysis in gaps. To learn a strategy that's profitable on multiple time frames, that's important too. To learn how to read stock charts and price patterns. To learn how to pick which symbol to trade on the day that's the best one, highest rated and to learn how to enter the stock and determine the targets. I teach that in the class too. And then to learn a new career you can do from home, which you know a lot of people are working from home right now. You can trade and do your job when you may not have been able to do that before. I know Eric, you were doing that a couple weeks ago. Now, I don't know if you've gone back. Eric has another full-time job. He, you may still be home. You know, I don't know what some places have opened up. Some places are still closed. New York is still closed. I don't. I don't know if we'll ever open. <laughs> At this point now, I, I don't know if I'll see the light of day till 2021 in, in Manhattan, but, oh, Eric, you're still working from home too. Wow. You haven't opened up either. That's crazy. You didn't even have that many cases in your state. That's nuts. Anyways, empower yourself to trade. Make the time to start trading. So the next class is June 27th to 28th if you're interested. Okay, it's $69.99 US dollars, nine to five Eastern time. If you're interested, email me. I will send you the forms to sign up. I'm doing a summer special through this Friday, the 19th. If you wanna sign up, you would get the Gap Options newsletter and the live trading room free through Labor Day, okay? And that's great. So you get all the options trades and all the day trades and the class in one shot. And again, July, August, it's a good period to be in the room because it will be third quarter earning season. And so you'll get basically two and a half months in the room, a little bit more than two and a half months in the room. And to get all the trades is, is fabulous. And I have been calling a lot of trades. Now let's go over here to Chate's question. And anybody else that has any questions, I'm just gonna go back to the charts because his question is about the market. 